Okay, so this is the story of the Adam's Discovery Part 1. And before we begin, I want to thank Zikuan Zhu for drawing the caric caricatures of the scientists that you'll be seeing in this video. Okay. Our story begins with Democritus in 400 BC. And he was an ancient Greek philosopher who came up with an original idea. The idea was that matter must be made up of material that cannot be divided. Okay, so it cannot be cut. Um, imagine, if you will, cutting a piece of paper in half over and over again. Eventually you get to a point where the paper cannot be cut. Well, what Democritus was saying was that all matter must be composed of material that cannot be cut. So if you keep going, eventually you're going to get to a point where no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to cut it. The word atomus, which is what he used, to means um, cannot be cut. And it's where we get the word atom from. Now, his theory was a five-point theory, and it's basically read like this. All matter is composed of atoms. There is a void, which is empty space, between atoms. Atoms are completely solid and indestructible. Atoms are homogeneous with no internal structure. Atoms are different in their sizes and shapes. So, at this time, there was another Greek philosopher named Aristotle. And Aristotle said, nope, Democritus is wrong. There is no atom. All matter is continuous. You can continually cut it, and if you could continually cut it, there would be nothing that would stop you. All matter is continuous. In fact, Aristotle believed that there were only four elements. And his teachings dominated the scene and brought about the age of the alchemists, which lasted for nearly 2,000 years. The alchemists were... Aristotelians. They believed in the teachings of Aristotle, and th which means they believed that there were four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. They also believed, since there are only four elements, that substances could be converted into other substances, a process known as transmutation. So they could take lead and convert it into gold and get very, very wealthy. So they spent a lot of time working on trying to develop this. During this time, the development of the atomic model is at a standstill. There's not really any thought about the idea of atoms. Okay? But alchemists did develop experimental techniques and instruments, including glassware, that were vitally important for the future of the development of the atomic model. To, so to say that they didn't contribute in any way would not be completely accurate. In 1661, Robert Boyle, of Boyle's Law fame, comes along, and Robert Boyle was one of the first scientists to practice the idea of con conducting controlled experiments. He was also among the first to publish the, result of his, the results of his experiments so others can learn from his work. And what he did in 1661 is he published a book known, that is generally regarded as the most important book published in chemistry called The Skeptical Chemist, where he outlined his experiments and his discoveries. And in this book, he gave us the modern-day definition of an element. He said, an element is any substance that cannot be broken down or cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. Now that's how we think about an atom, an at or an, sorry, that's how we think about an element. An element is anything that consists of one type of atom. It can't be broken down. So he defined for us what an element is. He also formed the Royal Society in London with 11 other scientists and gave the scientific community a voice to discuss the nature of materials around them. In 1785, Antoine Lavoisier comes around. And Antoine Lavoisier is a very interesting French nobleman. Um, and he is called the father of modern day chemistry, or the father of modern chemistry. And the reason is, is because he came up with a law that is fundamental to all chemistry. What Lavoisier did is he knew that when you 
heated a pure metal or that when a pure metal was heated, its mass increased. Now we know today that when a metal is heated, it oxidizes. It reacts with oxygen in the air and forms what's known as a metal oxide. So you could take mercury, react it with oxygen in the air by heating it, and you end up with mercuric oxide. So Lavoisier obviously didn't know this because they didn't even know about atoms at this point. So he was curious as to the origin of this extra mass. So what he did is he heated mercury in a sealed apparatus and carefully measured the mass before and after the reaction. And he found that the increase in mass of the metal was coming from the air. So he discovered this principle of oxidation, even though he didn't know exactly what it was. He discovered that the air was actually adding the mass to the metals. And he tried this with other metals too. And what he stated was that nothing is created, either in the operations of art or in those of nature. And it may be considered as a general principle that every operation there exists an equal quantity of matter before and after the operation, that the quality and quantity of the constituents is the same, and that what happens is only changes, modifications. Now, what that is, is that is the law of conservation of matter, uh, where we have condensed this to read matter is neither created nor destroyed it's rearranged in chemical reactions but if you read that passage carefully you can see that's exactly what Lavoisier was saying that matter is not created it is not destroyed it is rearranged in chemical reactions this is groundbreaking this gives us real evidence that the atom does exist because where why would matter that mass stay the same if it wasn't for the presence of atoms. So th the reason he's known as the father of modern chemistry is because he came up with the law of conservation of matter. Unfortunately for him, as I said at the beginning of this, he was a French nobleman. And the French Revolution happened shortly after this. And in 1794, he was executed uh, via the gui guillotine. And they said about him that when they cut off his head, it took a, a mere second to cut off a head that France may not produce again for another century. One of the truly brilliant minds of that time uh, was unfortunately executed well, well before his age. Now, all of these individuals, along with a lot of other people, too many to mention all in this a short little video, Ultimately, their work was summarized by John Dalton. And John Dalton, who was an English school teacher in 1808, wrote The New System of Chemical Philosophy, in which he published the first atomic theory. And there were five components to Dalton's atomic theory. The first is that all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Okay, so everything's made up of atoms. This is, this is directly from Democritus's idea that atoms are indestructible and unchangeable. Well, there's your law of conservation of matter. Elements are characterized by the mass of their atoms. So what he's saying is that there are different elements. And he even came up with a system, uh, or a system of symbols that he used to characterize the different elements. The first one, there's the oxygen. The second one's hydrogen, etc. Um, he said that these elements combine in fixed ratios to form compounds. And you can see these are his actual drawings of compounds that he thought existed. The first one would be hydrogen and oxygen, which is what he thought water was. One hydrogen, one oxygen. Okay? And that atoms combine in different ratios to form different compounds. So what Dalton is saying is that all material is made up of atoms, and these atoms combine to make compounds and th these compounds have different chemical properties. This is, this is modern day atomic theory to some extent. Now within this theory there are two key new additions that we haven't talked about yet. The law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions. Well the law of definite proportions is every molecule of a substance consists, consists of the same ratio of atoms. So if you think about water Water is two hydrogens and oxygen. 
and two hydrogens, one oxygen. Every water molecule will be two hydrogens, one oxygen. Now, if you have a different ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, you have a different compound. The law of multiple proportions is that the same elements can make up multiple substances. So even though every water molecule is two hydrogens, one oxygen, I could take two hydrogens and two oxygens, and I could make hydrogen peroxide. It's a different substance. Okay. So through the early 1800s, 1808, this is what we have for our theory of the atom. And even though John Dalton has, has written an atomic theory, the atom is not yet proven. It's not going to be proven until 1905. In part two, we'll learn about how the structure of the atom is deduced and how the atom was actually proven to exist.